We checked in. Boys, boys, boys. If you guys color, yes, sir. And I have crayons. If you color, then they'll give you free ice cream. She was saying, "How old are your kids?" And she brings you that, and I said, uh, "No, they're they're older than that." And she says, "Oh, okay. Well, if they color these, they get free ice cream." I said, "You better give me a couple." I'm getting ice cream. <laughs> Oh, look at that, Trish. Looking good here. Thanks, babe. Good look, go get my final zipper on. Oh. everyone wants us to go to. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, we thought this was the perfect RV park to do a quick setup video, and it will be a quick setup video because in New Zealand, in a Class C, there isn't really much to it. Now, you will notice that I pulled a little further back than I normally do, and the reason is, the hose is maybe 15 feet long. And so I just pulled a little further back so that I can fill up. And then I'm gonna pull forward until we get into the right spot. But it doesn't take very long to fill this up. All right, let's grab the electrical cord. There we go. Follow me. This is a- oh, Those are cool. Yeah, this is a fancy RV park. I think it's called Lakeview Lakeview Holiday Park. Queenstown Lakeview Holiday Park. There you go. And uh, there we go. Now the only other thing to do is to go inside, just make sure we have a orange light on the charger. All right, just one more step to the classy RV setup, and it's this button right here. And I'd say we're set up. That's easy. Water, electric, step. That's it. All right, Trish, kick us off. I was trying to think of something clever to say about bees. We're at a bee. Well, I'm planning on getting a lot of bee roll. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> now, can this bee sting you? No. Yeah. But it won't? No. Because? I'm, I'm not trying to... I'm of no, you know, I'm not trying to harm the bee or anything. The only reason you're stung by a bee is because you sat on it or stood on it or did really? something stupid. They're never going to hunt you down like a like a wasp. So, Ooh, there's, a, there's a wasp. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Caleb doesn't have your same calmness, it looks like. Oh, so a wasp is a little different? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as nice? Not as nice. No, they're from uh, uh, an introduced pest really? from Europe. Oh. They, they eat bees. Are they on me? No. Oh yeah. Oh great. Ah, so what do I do? Where? I don't know. You must have something like a scent or something in your hair or your shampoo. Yeah, it's called oh, fear. Great. You see what's going on here, Trish? Look at—he's just giving this bee a ride back to the nest. Oh great! He knows. Can I hold him? He knows he can hang out with Nick. Oh wait, ready? I can shake your hand. That's a her. Without. Yeah. By the way, Nick, this is Trisha, <laughs> Caleb, nice and Carson. Hey, right, right, right. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, I can tell this is going to be entertaining <laughs> already. <laughs> Dear old sheep shearing shed. Oh wow. So this was yeah, in a very shoddy state when um, I first came and knocked on the door here. So the, the, the concrete for example, that's this was open air so that's where the, the sheep used to do their business was between the concrete. That's incredible. The concrete cracks. So when I first walked in here, you could you could see the ground underneath, and the, the wind was howling through. Awesome. Um, so we sort of yeah, try to keep everything. Um, so original beams, original floor, original sheet pens. It's an original wall spreading table that was here. Wow. Quite a mild day. So they only get out of bed over about 12 degrees centigrade. So um, you know, I think it was a, a cooler start to the day and now mm -hmm. things have warmed up and you've got a lot of the workforce, for those worker bees are still here so they'll start kicking into action shortly and the numbers will thin out as they go out and start collecting 
we've got uh, honey around here, so that white, any time you see that white waxy lid, mm -hmm. you know, that's honey, so that's all their food stores around here. And then in the middle of the hive here, that's what we call brood, that's, that's all baby bees of different, different ages, so eggs, larvae, um, wow. capped brood, and there's a queen in here, and she, but she could be, you know, either side mm -hmm. of this for now. All right, so we got a bit of an education inside this hive that Nick has made just to show people the process of where the queen bee is and where the worker bees and the, and the male bees, which is about 10% of the hive. And so there's a little bit of a hole on the outside where the bees are coming in and out. So now let's pop around there and learn a little bit more about these bees and how they're coming in. Okay, here we go. So as long as the, the key here is you always just go on the side and you leave the entrance open and then they don't, really don't care if you're there or not. And I've sort of built this at this height, so Kids and everybody can come up. So you can pop your head right there, and they they just they don't won't care. They're just all worried about how much we need to collect honey and pollen. Get to work, everyone. Everyone. So as long as you're not blocking that, then they don't mind. So um, oh, we've really? been beekeeping in Otago over 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 a hundred years. So I'm I'm for my family fifth generation. So we go back. My brother's a beekeeper, and I was a beekeeper. My granddad's father was a beekeeper, and. My granddad used to buy his queen bees off um, Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to climb Everest. Really? He's New Zealand's most famous beekeeper, and his dad was a beekeeper. You're going to see the camera every once in a while move around like as if uh, a very scared attack, like as if I'm going to die, okay? Okay, <laughs> look. I'll show you proof. So, yeah. What's this? Look, you watch them just stack up. They'll just stack up because they can land, can't land because my head's in the way. Yes. So, you'll just see them all pile up out here. But you see the. None of them will have a go at me. They're just not interested. No. They've got a mission to do and, and they're going to do it. It'll work and they'll come back in. Yeah, and they just don't mind. And, and yeah. when you prevent them from doing their job or threaten them... That, well, they'll, they'll let you know. So, <laughs> and, and you can you can adjust your behaviour accordingly. <laughs> so if you're in the way of a big busy hive, they're going to let you know. Yeah, and gotcha. You'll hear the sound change. You can see all these bees out here now, yeah. just because I was, I was in the way. And if I jump back, problem solved. Oh, whoa! Look at they just like sucked in. And yes. they will just all disappear, no more bees. So, and is so it they'll, a they'll give you a warning, they'll let you know you're here, that's changed in tone. They'll change their hive, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, look, we're letting you know, time for you to move, um, otherwise, yeah, you know, there'll be a problem. Is it a myth that uh, bees die after they get stung? No, that's true. What we'll do, we'll leave those front doors open like we talked about, and we'll just get you guys around the sides here. Okay. So if you look behind you, now yeah, I've got all these bees Whoa. everywhere because yeah. they can't get in. So if you guys come around the sides, come in the sides. and clear out that entrance, and, and now if you put a camera on the front door. Oh my gosh. Boom. Did you see them all come in? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So we were standing there and they just kind of blocked yeah, their entrance. Yeah, they just like, you guys are in the way. Yeah, you're trying to do our work. as soon as you move in, it's 10 seconds and it's problem solved. What is the purpose of, a, of the smoker? Uh, it's, it's sort of twofold. You've got... Wait, I can, I can explain this one, right? Oh, all right. Okay, so the smoker, right, puts smoke into the hive, which makes the bees think that there's a fire, which makes them collect honey in case if their hive burns down, which makes them less hyper. Is that, is that at all accurate? That's pretty much on the money. Is it? So, uh, <laughs> so of, of why in particular you want to make them do that particular action is often you've got so many bees when you open your hive, you can't see what's going on. You can't look down in the frames, you can't see if you've got honey, what honey you've got captured. So spray the smoke on and they'll just they'll disappear down at the frames and you can see, if it, you can look inside your hive, see what's going on. Giving those breezes and helping, but we'll just give them a wee smoke. So there's a few, a few bees in the old lid there. So the more you go in, the more yeah. honeycomb there is because they start from the middle. They start from the middle, yeah, and that's where the hives, you know, warmest. It's only mature when they put that little white lid on the top. So when they're collecting it from the flower, uh, your female worker bee's got two stomachs. She's got a honey stomach and a stomach for her own digestion. Really? So she'll visit the flower. Drink that nectar, fill her honey stomach, fly back to the hive. Uh, at that point, her job's just just get more nectar. So her job's not to put it into here. So she's going to pass that to another worker bee. It's mouth to mouth, honey stomach to honey stomach. And it might get passed around a whole series of worker bees. And as it goes, honey stomach to honey stomach, it's when the bees are adding the things that make honey awesome. That's when they're adding the enzymes and glucose oxidase and gluconic acid and all the good things that make honey, honey. So all the little um, 
like circles. Yep. They're filled with honey. They're actually going, well, they're filled with nectar. So nectar. so the nectar's got to become honey. The bees have to turn it into honey. So that's the, that's, like that's the first step. It's, just, it's still sweet, but it's watery. It's about 80% water. So inside a hive, you're talking around 32 degrees. Anything that's 80% water sitting at 32 degrees is like an incubator. You're going to have problems. Mm. You know, you're going to have, so they need to get rid of the water. So you've got, once the nectar goes into here, it's still 80% water. So you've got a whole group of younger female worker bees who uh, are going to stand on top of that honeycomb, flap their wings furiously and blow the water out of the nectar. Eventually evaporate the water out and lower that water content 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, right down to between 12 and 16%. And as that water gets less and less and less, the honey is going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. And then when it's full to the top, the water content's right, put that little wax lid on it, safe for winter. No way. So that's literally a lid. It's a lid, yeah, so that makes it, so then therefore it's like a little uh, wax, a wax covered suitcase yeah. of honey that, you know, could leave for a thousand years, it'll never go bad, nothing can get in or out. Unbelievable. And come winter, take the wax lid off, eat the honey, take the wax lid off, eat the honey. And so are you waiting for this all to be covered with the lids? Before? Well, it's a matter of not being a greedy bugger and uh, <laughs> ensuring they, they need, each hive needs at least a box of honey to get through winter. So I want, wow. like for example, I want this hive to make two boxes, one for me, one for the bees. There, that whole section so that's, then. So that's our, you know, if you take that lid off, it's honey. Oh, Underneath yes. There. Ooh, can I taste? No, no way. Oh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Just, just don't dig it into, just go where my, my finger was. So what do I do, just go in? I'll just get those bees. It's getting a wee blow away. Okay. There you go. So just dip yep. my finger in yep. that. And uh, oh, oh, trick for young players. <laughs> oh my god. That one. <laughs> well, how are you guys going to get it in your. You're uh, going to have to undo your zip first. It kind of sounds. Oh. Can I get a Delicious. Little... Oh, <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. Well, to see the different stages, and now we're all capped. Yeah. So we can see. Uh, it's a heap of bees. There's our drone. See, it's got those big eyes we talked about. Mm -hmm. Big cigar shaped body, those big legs. And most important of all, no sting. Really? Yeah. He's all eyes. <laughs> He's all eyes. And his, you know, hold him. pretty much his sole job is to mate. That's his only job. I don't oh. know what to do. He just wants to. And this one? Another same drone? One, same one, yeah, yeah, just... Same. And then what else do we have here, Henry? You're picking out drones, but we also have a lot, obviously mostly females working. Uh, yeah, we've got underneath those bees, I'm just going to blow a whole lot of little white larvae in there. So the queen's laying right out to these side frames, which, um, yeah, means this, it's, I mean, this box is chocker full of bees, isn't it? Look at yeah, it. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, uh, just going to have a wee scan for a queen. Look at that pollen in there. Ooh. So all that. Oh yeah. How many times do you get stung Is that stung good a honey right there? Oh, it just depends if you have a good day or a bad day. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> hopefully none. You can tell if it's going to be a boy or a girl by the, the, the shape of the lid. So all these flat cap uh, into the cells here, we can tell that's all going to be worker brood. And then if we uh, poke around in here, see if you can see some of these ones. Here we go here. They stick out like a bit more like a 22 bullet mm -hmm. under here. Oh yeah, sure. So they're going to be they're going to be drones. They're going to be males. This is so much fun. And do you see what I'm holding? First of all, we're loving Queenstown, and secondly, you got to come to the bus stop, even if it's for to get a little bit of honey or experience. They have a cafe here and mm -hmm. cappuccinos and coffee and all sorts of stuff. But mm -hmm. if you can experience this and see this firsthand, it is. Quite a treat. What a learning experience. It really is. I've been in science class for the past hour. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And oh, there's a wasp. Wow, I really want to. You see that wasp? He's not nice. Not nice. I have a plan of attack. Okay. okay we want... Unbelievable. Okay. And they're really buzzing now. Sure, uh, you can hear the uh, tone. Yes. Has changed. And you don't have to be a beekeeper. 
to know to that pick, to pick that up that's the sound of getting pissed off <laughs> getting a little pissed <laughs> off you guys but that's all good but and you know five minutes be completely settled and back to work but what we'll do now is we've got ourselves a big you know, about three kilo of capped honey we'll go down to the shop and we'll take that capping off spin that and put it into a jar for you to take away with you so we'll go through the Amazing. part b Part B. Part B. Uh, well, I didn't mean it. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> did, that was unintended. Completely unintended. Yeah. But I'll use it again. Yes. See that white wax is starting to reform again. So I just really gently to drag that down. That's a big that's that pile of wax you can see down the bottom. So there's our fresh raw honey popper finger in there. Try that. That's so good. First of all, it's warm, <laughs> sure. which makes it so good. Because it's, it's fresh out of the hive, so it's, you know, the temperature inside the hive is warm. Yes, it's warm, mm. and it's amazing it tastes so fresh. The hive, 10 minutes ago. Yeah. It should be fresh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. I'm going to clean up. And then, bring this up. So it's going to go through our filter. Yeah, well, we've got a fan there. Yeah, let's see that. There is nothing better than a real experience. And when I say real, something that you can't recreate, mm -hmm. something that's natural. Mm -hmm. That's just it. Yeah. It's natural. You've got five generation beekeeper. Yes. Showing us kind of like his tricks and things like this, right? And just the fact he's out there with no gloves and no Well, he's hat literally on. opening the beehive mm -hmm. for us. He's opening the door for you to learn about mm -hmm. bees and what's going on from beginning to end, lifespans, jobs, yeah. and then the fruit of the labor, which oh, is yeah. the honey. It's so neat. I was shocked, absolutely shocked, when Nick said that this business they established seven months ago. Yes. This feels like something that has been here for 10 years, the way they have everything just dialed in so Well, so the great. love and attention that was put into just this building alone. Yeah. So to bring it back from what it was and create it into what it is, mm -hmm. is amazing. So when you come to Queenstown, and I know you will, because you have to put it on your bucket list to, to come out here <laughs> yes. to New Zealand, but we've really enjoyed Queenstown. Uh, definitely come by the buzz stop, and we'll of course include a link down below. It was great. I uh, 187, and we'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Okay, 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 okay. So I got the insider tip. I'm so excited because I called and it went straight to voicemail. But the insider tip was that locals don't wait in the queue. And I was like, no way. There is a line down the street. Well, we would wait it for an hour. We just got in, second call, put it in order, 15, one, five Well, let's minutes. get down there and pick it up. Yes! Feed the cameraman. Carson's food review. Feed the cameraman. Make me a shirt that says that. <laughs> Dad? Dad? Oh, baby. There's aioli. We've got tomato, onions. I don't know. We needed some time to process that burger. <clears throat> it is, in my opinion, we'll get Trisha's opinion next. That's the one that counts. <laughs> the best burger I've ever had in my life. Really? Yes. Hands down. Really? Hands down. This is not a paid advertisement. It really is not. No, <laughs> it's not. It really was very good. It Carson was fantastic. said afterwards, he goes like this, thank you, mom. <laughs> he, and then he moved his 9.4 to a 10. Yeah. And all of this happened off camera because I couldn't continue to record. By the yeah. way, there is a bee flying around me and I am not concerned. Well, you should be because that is not a bee. That's a wasp. That's a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.
and we're leaving. Just like that. Without the boys again. What's up with that? Is it, it's not that we don't want to spend time with them because we spend a lot of time a with lot them. Of time. <laughs> we're Comparatively <very> speaking. <laughs> we're overachieving in that category. In the time okay? spent together. But it's because that the boys got these passes up at the gondola and they're just, what is it, L losing? Yeah. They're losing it up, they're mountain biking, they're cutting deals to go on trails. Yes. All right, why don't you share with everyone, let me adjust this, uh, why don't you share with everyone where we're going, what we're doing. Okay, so we are going on a wine tour right now. Mm -hmm. with, al we, with altitude? Altitude wine tours. We're meeting downtown, central downtown. Yes, so we're walking. We're walking. Now they're going to take us to, I think, five different wineries, restaurant, restaurants. It's even a craft beer tour. We're going on the Twilight one, which is apparently a little bit more casual, laid back, and fun. So we're that sitting, sounds good. Doesn't it fun? That, that sounds sound good? good. I want to go on that. So we're to meet them downtown, central Queenstown at 345. Downtown in Queenstown. And we decided to walk. In 1991, one morning he woke up and he said, I want to work wines in Gibson Valley. Two problems. First, nothing about wine except <laughs> drinking it. The second one was everybody told, told him that it's crazy. The minimum order on shipping anything to your mother-in-law mm. is six bottles. And I think this is what she would like the most. So six bottles of this is not going to work out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But wow. Yeah. Devastated. <laughs> Devastated. Devastated. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go out to dinner when we get home. Look at how gorgeous this is. Look at the pews and then the view out of the front. No wonder weddings are here. And your thoughts? My thoughts are that this was so much fun. Mm -hmm. I loved like what you said, someone else is taking care of us. Yes. They're teaching us, they're sharing with us. Mm -hmm. The hospitality in New Zealand is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's what I've learned. Yes. I'm actually a little nervous. Why? Because I can't stop recording flowers. And in the last <laughs> video, someone said that it, I might need an intervention or something. So <laughs> I pass them, know. I start recording them. It's almost instinctive now. It's, I'm, I'm worried about it. Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little worried about it. But the fact is, the properties that we've been visiting are absolutely gorgeous. Stunning. They're stunning. And the mm -hmm. drive is pretty. And you know, as this is like all the tours, you know, the more you go, the more you get to know people and you start talking and then people become friends and then you start and hearing their stories. And everyone's from around the world. I know. It is so neat to meet people from everywhere it is. because they have so many interesting things to share. Yeah, on our tour there's people from Australia, there's people from Nebraska, India, Scotland, Atlanta. Good job. All right, I'm sure we're late. We're usually the last ones we to get on the... We are seriously the problem children we of this are. tour we, because we, we, we really are. are trying to actually record it and share it, I know. whereas everybody else is... And I don't even feel like we've been recording enough because no. the conversation is so great and the well, property and looking around. Here's the thing. Just on a normal bike ride, if it takes 30 minutes, it takes us an hour and a half. I know. So to be here and do this, I mean, this would take us half a day to really truly record. Yeah, it really it's would. It's gorgeous. This property is stunning. All right. Well, I think that's going to be so it for the Stonehill? wine tour, but um, we recommend if you're in the Queenstown area, Altitude Wine Tours, check it out, link below. And I'm trying to find the exact name of this oh, exact location. Stone, Stone Ridge, Hill. I thought. Stone Hill, Stone Ridge. Anyway, you don't need to know any of it. All you need to know is we went on an altitude tour. <laughs> that's okay? true. And then they're going to take they care of everything. you. They know everything. They know everything, so you don't have to, and you can just enjoy yourself. <laughs> well, let's go back and find out what the boys are up to. I'm sure they have a story of their own. Yes. You know? I'm glad they left. Hello. I'm glad they left the place nice and secure. <laughs> They're not even here. Doors unlocked. <laughs>
Jeez. Completely gone. Just chip bags opened and destroyed. <laughs> That's it. It looks like a disaster. I just cleaned it last night. There's a glass on its side. Look at all the windows and are completely open. Oh, what, did you end up, what did you end up doing today? Oh, well, a lot of uphill biking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We uh, biked up to the top of the gondola. Mm -hmm. like, biked up? Come on. Come on. Yeah. You bike to the top. I bike to the top. You have a look on your face like you're full. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, we basically went around. We got some, uh, we got some fried chicken. Mm hmm We got a cookie dough. Mm -hmm. Cookie dough ice cream. Wow. Um, and you mountain biked. And we mountain biked. Did you biked. luge today? Yes, we also luged this morning. That was very fun. Nice. Oh, you could check some more of that on Classic Caleb. Oh, wow. You're plugging your brother's channel? No, don't follow him. You changed. Yes. It's a little chilly, and there's little bugs. Ooh. So what I kind of bugs? On, on sleeves. Oh. Things, those little mosquito things, those sand flies. Gotcha. Let's go get some... We have to find water. We don't right. have any water. Do we don't have any toothbrushes, because when the toothbrushes fall behind the toilet, we call that the no-go zone. <laughs> And two of them have fallen, so two of us cannot brush our teeth tonight. Okay, so we're going to a pharmacy. And do you want to take some bags so we don't have to buy any? It's like you're a local. How many times have I been to the grocery store? I keep forgetting. You remembered. Good job. Well, you know, remembered it's my what? accent, Trish. It's your accent. We what? need to leave now. Oh my gosh, Trisha. Look at this backdrop as you're walking. It's insane. This place is insane. It's is this not? Is this amazing? Is this it's not like ridiculous? It's like what my dreams are made of. It really is. Eating like, dinner by the water. Uh, the whole community is out just talking, <laughs> hanging out. I now know why so many people are like Queenstown is my favorite place on the planet. This place is ridiculous. <laughs> Wow, we're gonna get a good view up here. 